They're waiting for the dawn. They're waiting for the dawn. They're coming down on the sand of Creek. They're waiting for the dawn. Oh, she's in town. In Colonel Nickel. They're waiting for the dawn. He's coming down. He's coming down. He's waiting for the dawn. On Sand the Creek. Women and children, they take their life. Women and children, they take the life. They're coming down. They're coming down. On the sand of creed, on the sand of creed. They're gonna kill. A rap a hole, they're gonna kill. A rap a hole, a rap a hole, and Cheyenne too. A rap a hole, and a Cheyenne too. I believe it's very important for the the public to know th about Sand Creek, so that uh, some of the stories from Sand Creek could be uh, heard. Like one of the stories that I was I heard was that an elder an elder lady when they killed her when they shot her she was dying and she was laying there, and she was telling her family to run on, run. Don't she said. Don't forget us. And this is to let our people know that they aren't forgotten. The massacre itself uh, consumed of uh, murdering children, target practice on them, uh, cutting body parts off of men and women, um, and then parading them back to Denver and uh, where they were celebrated. Uh, they celebrated all our our scalps and our fingers and. Uh, private parts uh, uh, as it was a victory. And the healing run is to cleanse the path what that led the that the soldiers took and it's to cleanse the evil and the bad spirits that was there that the men had within them when they took took the, the, the remains that they used as trophies. It was designed by the Shiner Apos for uh, uh, a heart healing process for us. Yes, it is very emotional to see everybody running, and especially for the ones that cannot run, that cannot be there. Like they say, this is not a race, it's a healing run for our people for all of our, a lot of our elders that aren't able to be there in person. And then this is just a, a way of showing, you know, that our people aren't forgotten. I guess one thing we can be grateful for at the end of the day is that uh, Captain Silas Soul and uh, Lieutenant Joseph Kramer and their two regiments stood down and did not fire on the Cheyenne Rappo camp. In fact, they fired their guns in the air to hurry along the, uh, the people running past them. And um, I believe there was a, uh, it was a gift from God to the Shine Rappos. If it wasn't for Silas Sewell, 
we probably wouldn't be here today. He, him and Kramer were the ones, by the grace of God, saved our people. Had they fired upon our people, we would have all been gone today. I hope everybody that watches this film has a clear understanding how uh, the Shine Rapo people uh, suffered and how they uh, come through and survived and uh, are well and happy and strong today. It's hard. It's very hard. But in order to see our people again, we must forgive. We can't forget, but forgiveness. A lot of that makes me angry. Uh, but when you carry anger in your heart, is uh, it's not a sign of healing. Uh, forgiveness is is good, but like uh, we said, we'll never forget. Right now I feel peace. The very first time I came, I could feel the hurt, the pain, and you know, the it, it, it just didn't, you know, just could feel the, the what is it, spirits, how they were hurting, and you know, the very first time I came. I'm feeling that some pain, mm -hmm. and then on the other hand, I'm feeling to, uh, to be proud that um, the ancestors that survived here, you know, uh, thankful for them. And when you think about all the babies and the children that were involved in all of this, that, that's what makes, you know, that was what broke, broke my heart. Uh, I, I feel really hurt, you know, in my, in my heart, in my spirit. And uh, knowing, you know, the tragedies that happened to our ancestors here, knowing the the pain that that uh, they experienced, I feel like you know it's uh, forgiveness has been given to what all the people that what they did to our Native Americans. I feel good today. I'm having mixed emotions, well, you know. You. And uh, one of the reasons I was wanting to be here, I've got two young grandsons and. Uh, I would like to um, tell them about things like this, about their ancestors. And I want my grandkids to know, you know, what, not to have hatred, you know, to have forgiveness for, for what happened and, and to, to grow to have forgiveness in their heart, to know that our ancestors endured a lot here, not just here, but all over. I have to forgive because I can't, uh continue on to hold bad feelings. Mm -hmm. I will forgive, but I won't forget what happened here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I will always remember and always tell my children and my grandchildren about it. But yes, forgiveness is a strong, a big part of healing and moving forward. I feel real good in my heart and I'm glad I came. I say a hold to my help for allowing me to, to be here today. God knows that we haven't forgotten. We, you know, we haven't forgotten what has happened to our people 150 years ago that, you know, we're here now. We're, we're, we're walking these same grounds and, and, and we feel your, the pain that went on here. And it's just amazing to me, you know, that I can, I can be a part of it. I think that's the reason why we're here today, because the spirits that, uh, that the names, my Indian name, Yellowbird, is generational handed down to responsibility. There is no beginning and no end. The spirits are here today, and the sobbing that's taking place is a necessity to reconnect us back to our spirit so we can become warriors once again. A warrior brings confidence, peace, and spirituality, and security, confidence back to their village. Not a fighter, not a fighter that we become. We could have come here a long time ago. We, we, I often thought about it, 
we could have come to Sand Creek. But I was always afraid because of the things that happened here. And I didn't know how I could handle the emotion. It's 150 years ago, but the emotion is still very fresh as if it just happened last week or something. It was just um, an emotional day, emotional day to, to be here, to give our respects, pay our respects to our, our ancestors here that lost their lives and those that survived. It was so good to see all these Cheyenne people, Cheyenne Rappo people come together and, and to offer prayers and songs and remembrance, remembrances of their, their own families. I came out because my grandpa, James LaPointe, was a storyteller of my people. There's always been a bond between the Cheyenne and the Lakota people. Uh, I, knew, I grew up knowing the stories of what happened here at Sand Creek and knowing that it was the 150th anniversary, I, I knew that it was a very important time to, to come out here and to, to, to be here beside, beside our historical brothers. Well, growing up, I didn't hear about Sand Creek. Um, it wasn't spoken in our home. And I don't know why, but I'm assuming because it was so horrible that it wasn't talked about. And I didn't learn the full story until I started working with Sand Creek in 2010. And then, then I decided, you know, I told myself, you know, I want my people to know what happened here, how we were treated, and how we ended up in Oklahoma. You know, if not, you know, all of our Cheyenne Rapaho Nation, you know, I believe, you know, we are all descendants of Sand Creek. I know I am very proud and honored to be a descendant of black cattle on my mom's side. And my grandpa's, my grandma and grandpa on my dad's side, you know, are descendants from here also. It's real emotional and uh, spiritual for me to come uh, back here and to be asked to uh, do the pipe ceremony. And I, I followed protocol. I had to identify myself and how I'm related, directly related here. Not only the Cheyennes, not only Southern Cheyenne, and not only Arapaho, but our ceremonies that connect us to the uh, astrology of Mother Earth and how our people lived in harmony and balance using their ceremonies. And my grandfather was just a young man here and when Schivinger and uh, uh, they were attacked under uh, the, uh, my grandfather, uh, White Antelope, Rapaho, they were here and my grandparents, they tell me these stories over and over and over again as I was uh, maturing and they took on a different meaning, just like my name, White Man. I never did. When I didn't never did like that name, but my grand, my mother told me that someday it was going to mean something, and today it means something. Today it means something, and I'm a direct descendant of what happened here. It's been 150 years, but in our history, this would be comparable comparable to the 9/11 of the larger United States. We were flying under the protection of the, of the 33 star American flag appropriate to its time and a white flag of truce when they were attacked. And it's unconscionable that, that the attack even occurred, even to Selma's own subordinates. You know, there were people who refused to fire under Shivington's command. And uh, Reverend Shivington, I have no words. Um, but <clears throat> it's how soon is America going to forget 9-11? That's how long it's going to be before we forget Sand Creek. I can't really feel any forgiveness because it was so horrific. And these people were innocent. You know, they, they were sleeping. They had the flag. They had the white flag. They... They really believed they were living in a place of 
peace. And then to be, for this thing to happen to them while they were still asleep. In all that snow that they had to run through. Children, women, and elders. And perhaps someday I'll feel that forgiveness. But right now it's still, the emotions are still heavy. And it's just like, People say, like, the feelings are still raw, you know. And uh, I know, I know I'll, you know, I'll eventually have those feelings of forgiveness. But right now, today, being in this place, it's really hard to feel that way, you know. Healing and forgiving are two different things. Uh, one gives birth to the other. You can't heal without, without forgiveness. And so, you know, we see here today, you know, we saw two separate camps this morning. What was sacred to us was kept sacred up, up on the hill. But, and then we were able to come down here and intermingle with everybody else. And it's important to do that so we can have that we can we can bring that. There were people here this morning who were descendants of the governor who sent Shevington in, and they apologized to me. And I I'm, I told them I'm not I'm not Cheyenne or Arapaho, but you know I appreciate the sentiment that the descendant of the governor who sent Shevington in came in and did that. So that it's a good beginning to a to a healing process and and. Uh, I think we can we can build on this. We can build on this. The word Sankrix to me, it represents hope. It represents vision and it represents dream that our ancestors, their spirituality and their flight to survive and coexist with a fast changing uh, world that they were being confronted with. It gives me hope to be able to continue to do what I'm doing. What, if it wasn't for my ancestors' teaching and that way of life, we wouldn't be here. Their heart, their, their, their passion, and their love, and their forgiveness, and their spirit that still exists through all of us. Their love for diversity. Without diversity, there's no unity. Hey, well, give us a blessing this day. We come here, right. spiritual healing for what happened to our people this day. They will look at us, pity us this day. Give us strength. The runners, the weather, everything. Be with us this day. Found at the Ottoman. Hey, well, detest us. Not uh, Adawa, not uh, Nutsia, Bill. This day, we come here to honor our relatives. Very thankful that we are here today. We say, Aho, Kaan, I told you, my young, he was to Sikoa, he was to my young, he was to Shwatimana, he was to Haiyas, he was to Maakis, not to Tamaha, he was to Haiya, he was to Suwa, he was to Sae, he was to Gachkuna, the pale men know he was to Gachkuna, he was to Sikoa. Future generations to come, we can have. We can have this spiritual healing run, can go on. We can remember our relatives this day. Come here, put food down here, have ceremony. Come here, shed some tears for our relatives. A lot of people came here today. Look at us, pity us this day. Everybody came. In a prayer, I start to say some words for my relatives here this day. We ask these saints your name to the good sport spirits in the four directions. Nah, and then hench. We're on TV. <laughs> you guys gonna run like that? Yeah. yeah. Are you ready? <laughs> <laughs>
I was born in the 1940s, and that's just 80 years ago when that happened, see, from 60s, 1864, see, and there were still people around, you know, and I, and I was raised by them old people, you know. My grandfather was born in the 1870s, all those, all his cousins that come to the house were all born about that time. They had all those stories, you know, so I heard, I could hear some of those stories that they would talk about, you know, so. Uh, I see them when I see that, and I think of what they did to those, when I see those old women crying, telling the story, and they'd be crying. You know. They'd be talking in, in Cheyenne or, you know, but they'd be crying, you know, and I know. What I said, what's, what's Grandma talk? what's she crying for? Oh, they're talking about that Sand Creek, you know. So it's still emotional. It's, that's not, you're right, it's not that long ago. Really, not that long ago. I'm enjoying this because I'm seeing children here, like 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 years old, who've never been here before. And I'm seeing the impact of what running and burning cedar and hearing songs and hearing people pay homage to the lives that was lost here. I'm seeing the impact that it has on them. And that really, that really is kind of in, enriching to me. That's really powerful thing. I mean, I, I, I just can't explain it. It's, so, so I'm real glad to be here this year, come to uh, Sand Creek for a lot of reasons. Not only that, that do I have a direct connection here, but I have a direct connection with all the people that are here. When I was out here five years ago, I was listening to the stories of the elders, you know, and listening to uh, how it went, you know, and you heard it today. Well, this weekend, well, if a bullet would have been a little bit this way or a little bit that way, I wouldn't be here today. And listening to that and, and, and listening to uh, everything they have overcome, you know, and still here today, it made me think about our people, about our people, about the Chicano people, about the Mexican people. It made me think about all indigenous tribes from the north to the south of this continent that we have a shared history of oppression. And um, I seen how they were uh, trying to heal themselves as well as others through spiritual running like that in a running way. And I thought that would be a good idea for our community to uh, address the issues faced by our community also. One of the things I stress to our runners back home, the Nahuelian community, is I encourage them to come to Sand Creek not only that they know the oral history of our staff and its beginning, but they also come out here and experience it also. A couple of our runners, there are now Eolene runners, uh, found it in them to come and do so. But, but uh, they were full, fully aware of why they were here. We were here to pray for those that were murdered and slaughtered there. And we were here to pray for those who have survived. <laughs> When the healing run occurs, I think it's to honor those that were killed at Sand Creek, to continue to honor our history, which for us is not dead, it's alive. We have what we call a living history. 
uh, and to continue to remember the people that were involved there uh, and to ask that their spirits be at peace and that the spirits of those that committed uh, the vicious attack be at peace. Uh, because ultimately, we should all try to live in proper relationship with one another. Uh, and so the run goes to honor the memory, to celebrate the fact that Cheyenne and Arapahoes are still here, that the spirit endures, but at the same time, to understand it and also to, to be the kind of understanding, forgiving people that we were placed on earth to be. Today, uh, we went down and talked with the groups last night. What, what's going on here is spiritual healing run. And, and if you run that, just as long as you step one foot in front of the other, this is healing. That's what it's about, the essence of what's taking place here. Spiritual healing. Just remember what we're doing this for, who we're doing it for, and why we're doing it. Just remember they're running with, with us. They're right there beside us. And we're running for them, remembering them. Always remember our, our elders and our past. Always know where we come from. Know who you are. Oh, yay, you got in the fun man, you know that? Oh, <laughs> way to the starting point of our day two spiritual healing run. Our ancestors. All right, come on, Edge. Go. Shiva the nuts. Shiva the nuts. Go. 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 Going through this, you know, I've learned a lot. Um, I had my family back home, you know, tell me stories and whatnot, but actually being here and at the site, you know, it was kind of emotional, it was spiritual. Um, there was a lot of emotions when you're down there at the site, and so I just wanted to honor, you know, my ancestors that have suffered through everything by running for them. Uh, we want to run a mile here. Um, uh, Heather, Heather. Let's go guys. Go, man. Got it. Good, get out of the big door first. When I run, you know, I put everything, you know, negative aside and I run and I think about, you know, what they had endured and, you know, the suffering that they had to go through. Sister girl, come get in. All right. Did it. Oh, yeah. Ugh. Yeah. Oh, 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 yeah. Just start pushing. One more. It's iron Woman. Iron Woman. Contest right there. Alright. Road 2G. I said, yeah, 2G, yeah. Go left! Honk the horn. Go left!
it's been a great great day we started out like seven o'clock this morning and the temperature is like nine degrees and wind chill about zero and we're from Oklahoma and this altitude uh, Colorado we're running in altitude thin air all my runners are doing good we're very very proud of all the runners today I mean outstanding wow pivot pivot a hundred times you know, man, they've done good. My grandma, Bessie Romano's, is, grandpa was Henry Romano's, and she told us a story about surviving Sand Creek, and her mom was just a young girl at that time. She was only about four or five years old, and the way they came in, they, they bombarded the camp with their ammo, their cannons, <coughs> and where they were camped were farther up north. And they seen they seen them coming. They heard them coming. They said the way they they heard them would sound like uh, lightning and thunder coming. They heard the horses. Everything back then was so quiet. They heard them coming. And when they they came upon the campsite, Henry Romanos grabbed his family, his daughters, put them on the horse, and they fled the scene. Due to that, we're still here. After all that. And I'm thankful for that every day. You know how much laundry we got? No, we, we're, we're doing like about 20, 20 some miles. Uh -huh. So you can almost like count drops. Okay. I think so this is, this is like about my fourth drop. Mm -hmm. So that's like a mile and a half, two and a half miles. So two and a half miles times four is about 10 miles. So probably got about 10 more left, something like that. That's just, I'm trying to figure it out. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. When I started running, I didn't have any idea that it would take me this far and bring me out here to, you know, the Sand Creek Massacre commemoration, to run for our people and to run for the people that can't, you know, the ones that are, you know, here with us, available to us, but they just can't physically get up and do 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 what we're doing. So. It makes me feel good inside to go ahead and be that person, be that representative. Shiv it the nuts. Shiv it the nuts. <laughs> great honor to see them here. I wish all my people back home could be here to see this, you know. But they're running for the people that couldn't make it, or running for the people that are not able to run, but they, they want to run. It's the spirit of what's taking place here that is really, really outstanding. We got a lot accomplished today. Did a lot for our people. You know, a lot of us went out of our way to do this. So it feels good. We all worked as a team. We're all one people, you know. We did it for Sand Creek. I'm proud to be a part of this. Um, you know, this is our culture, this is our identity, the Cheyenne and Arapaho people. Um, you know, this suffering that our people had to go through all these years, you know, it's finally being recognized. And it's finally, you know, we're getting, we're getting, you know, healing for our people. I don't want to like a whole lot of people on there. What's up? Alright, run? Yeah, yeah. First one, let's All go! Alright, let's, let's go. go. Let's go! Hey. Northern hey. hey. Arapahoes, uh, they got started first this morning. And then we got second, we were on the second leg for uh, Southern Cheyenne Arapahoes. And then uh, Northern Cheyennes, they'll be right after us today uh, to complete the session for today. It's been really great for all of our runners, and, uh, tribal members that made their way over here. Um, we all came together, all Northern, Northern Arapahoes, Northern Cheyennes, Southern Cheyenne Arapahoes, we all came together. You know, we had a, a nice get together down there at the Sand Creek site. And then, uh, you know, we got started on our running a few days ago. And, uh, you know, we've uh, all worked well together. You know, we've all came together. Uh, we, uh, we've uh, even prayed together. And, uh, 
uh, got broke broke bread with each other, got to eat with each other. Uh, we talked good with one another also. And uh, you know, to this point, you know, we've uh, we've uh, doing our best to run along and take care of one another, help one another. That's so cool, man. Always, ever since I was a little little guy, you know, when I was when I can learn how to walk, you know, I've always ran. I've been running my whole life. So, you know, running is uh, I understand that you know the spiritual healing part of it, you know, that that uh, we're all seeking for, you know, Cheyennes and Rappos, Northern and Southern, you know, all of us. So, you know, I understand it and I have a uh, deep connection with it. I feel really good when I'm running out here. Yeah, it's my first time being out here, so I feel really good. I didn't think I was gonna get that far, actually. I thought I was gonna like probably get like three miles and give up, but I kept putting myself out there, so. If you don't have really no motivation, then it doesn't really help, but you know, Kevin was out there, he was pushing me, telling me, come on, come on, so I kept going, and he would run next to me, and we would like keep up with each other, keep our pace together, and then he would talk to me while we were running, so it really made me happy. You know, uh, we come out here and we not just run, but we're also praying, you know, for our uh, for our loved ones, our families, relatives, our tribe. You know, for those ones, you know, that passed on years ago. You know, so we're still healing like that. And, you know, it was, it was a terrible thing that happened, you know, years years ago. But here, here we are today. You know, we've uh, we're survivors. We're still here, and uh, you know, we we can come here now and pray, pray about it, pray for our families future generations to come, you know, we can, you know, we can move forward in life in a good way. The sky that morning, gray and gloomy, an orange opaque veil on the eastern horizon, the air cold hard, visible condensed vapor of breath exhaled. The ground, covered by white diamonds, sparkling in the light of a new day. The U.S. flag above, blown by a painful breeze. The encampment below sleeps. Hundreds of hooves approach. The voices of howitzers break the loud silence, awakening young and old innocent and peaceful. The bullets break the sound barrier before flesh is mangled, causing a realization that this is not a nightmare. The clean blanket of white covering Mother Earth turns red from the penetration of sabers as the Cheyenne elders do their best to save the children run to eternity. It was a blessing and an honor to, to run for our Cheyenne and Arapaho people. Regardless of northern or southern, we're all Cheyenne and we're all Arapaho. And we're here in honor of them. This is all for them. All our ancestors that passed on and died in a bad way. You know, some of the stories that these runners will tell you, it is. It's a spiritual healing run. And that's what this is about. It's about healing. try to move forward, try to have a better community. We're all connected over here. We're all descendants from uh, the Sand Creek Massacre. And, uh, you know, uh, we, we came up here and we, uh, we ran, you know, we all ran together. And uh, I, I can't express the, uh, the feeling that I got whenever we, we ran together. Uh, we uh, made it a point that the last, the last mile of every day that we, we would all get off our vehicles and we would run together. And uh, the spirit that I felt whenever we ran together, that was a wonderful feeling. Uh, it was a spiritual healing. Everything that, uh, that we aimed for, it was, it was, it was uh, we, we, we made it. We did it together and uh, in remembrance for 1864, everything that happened. Yahweh, 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 
Ya hey ya hey ya hey ya hey ya hey ya hey ya. Our runners, the kind of half, so half of them are kind of scattered all over this place. Some of them are here tonight, but they ran for healing for our people and for everybody. They ran for my family, me. They ran for our youngest to the oldest of our tribes, the ball that's shining around old tribes. It feels really good to be inside the circle, this wheel. Um, we're always coming home. That, that's, we're all here and, and I'm just real happy to be a part of all this. And I'm, I'm humbled that, that, uh, that I can be part of this. So I look out and, and see my brothers and my sisters. told me about Silas when I was growing up so I've known about the family although I I really started learning a lot more about him in 1983 when I came to Denver and saw his name on the monument up there I said I don't I don't know very much about Silas <laughs> so I started corresponding with my aunt who was the family historian It's a great honor to the family to see that happen, that to know that somebody in my family was courageous enough to deserve that kind of honor. Well, let, let me tell you what happened the first time I read the letter. We were standing right here, and I think it was 2003, and that's a hard letter to read because you're describing what happened to the ancestors of the people you're reading it to and I read that whole letter and I sat down and then one by one each of the women that was here and the girls came over to me and gave me a hug that was a really powerful powerful thing for me very emotional emotional time and I feel that each time that there's that connection between them and me. In a way, they were victims of Sand Creek, and in a way, my uncle was a victim of Sand Creek in the same way. Well, a similar way. It's almost like we now are becoming family again. The, everybody that was involved in Sand Creek back then were enemies, but now we have these same descendants of these people coming together. I, I've met uh, William Bent's great-great-great-great-grandson, and I've met John Evans' great-great-granddaughter, and uh, they're all participating in, you've got the Army, you've got the, the Methodists, everybody is participating, and uh, along with the Cheyenne and Arapaho, they are the ones that suffered the most, but we're all becoming family.
help by not firing on our old people at Sand Creek. And he was assassinated here in this area because he was testifying against Shivington, providing testimony against Shivington. And in his honor and his memory, we placed a plaque on this building. Good to see everybody here. And it's good to especially see the young kids. You know, these little kids here that are participating because they're the ones that are going to carry this on and continue this. I was just thinking about why we're here. And uh, we all are here for something. And this is our uh, ancestors, remembering our ancestors. I know they all have some connection because we're all Cheyenne and Arapaho, and we all had people that perished during that event, that massacred them. So it's a good feeling to be here. It's been a good week, a good week. A lot of good things happened. You know, we're all gonna get blessed. All the runners here, all the Cheyennes, Rappahoes, Northern Cheyennes, Rappahoes too. You know, it's a good thing what we're doing here. I think it's the energy here that, that it's just a beautiful thing today. Uh, we're showing our support for the 150th Sand Creek uh, Memorial, the massacre, and I think that uh, it touched a lot of people and that's what, that's why everybody's here uh, showing support. And uh, I'm just humbled and honored to be a part of it. Our sacred way of life they followed. Those that were camped at Sand Creek. Respect and honor it, remember it. Follow it, respect each other, our way of life, life ways are sacred. Respect this land of my forefathers. Respect this earth that we live on. Respect the elements that are part of our life. I want to give Special thanks and recognition to the Sand Creek Spiritual Healing Runners who are here this morning. From their starting point at Sand Creek outside Eads, Colorado, to the state capitol, they have traveled a distance of roughly 180 miles. That's a remarkable feat. At time, I expect some of them at times they experienced pain. I'm sure at times some of them thought about giving up. But of course, uh, these are not just any runners. They are representatives of the Cheyenne and Arapaho tribes and they most definitely did not give up. These runners offered up their pain and sacrifices a relatively, their pain and struggles a relatively small sacrifice as a tribute to the Arapaho and Cheyenne indigenous people who woke to and were murdered in an unthinkable nightmare 150 years ago this past November. When the attacks began and the shots rang out, Black Kettle exited his tent and he raised a pole with the American flag on it. The flag had been presented to him by the Commissioner of Indian Affairs in Washington. So there could be no misunderstanding, Chief Black Kettle also raised a white flag but the bullets kept coming and Black Kettle retreated. Another Chief White Antelope ran toward the commanders. A member of the U.S. Forces later testified that White Antelope held up his hands and shouted, stop, stop, speaking in plain, clear English. As the firing intensified, White Antelope folded his arms and calmly began to chant what would become his death song Nothing lives long except the earth and the mountains. In 1865, 
the Joint Committee on the Conduct of the War, looking back on the, the start of the, of the Plains War, determined that the truth was that Colonel Chivington, and I quote, surprised and murdered in cold blood the unsuspecting men, women, and children on Sand Creek who had every reason to believe they were under the protection of the United States authorities, end quote. Today we gather here to formally acknowledge what happened, the massacre at Sand Creek. And we should not be afraid to criticize and condemn that which is inexcusable. So I'm here to offer something that has been too long in coming. And on behalf of the state of Colorado, I want to apologize. And I don't make that apology lightly. I talk to all the living former governors of Colorado that goes back, stretches back 40 years, and each one of them agrees and in spirit is standing here beside me. Governor Lamb, commented that, Governor Lamb commented that two of the most powerful words in the English language are, I'm sorry. To the runners, to the tribal leaders, and to all of the indigenous people and the proud and painful legacy that you all represent, on behalf of the, of the good and peaceful, the loving people of Colorado, I want to say I am sorry for the atrocities of our government and its agent that were visited upon your ancestors. Today, as these runners complete their 16th annual Sand Creek spiritual healing run, I want to assure you that we will not run from its history and that we will always work for peace and healing and we will make sure that this history continues to be told. Today we honor the victims and survivors of Sand Creek Massacre. We remember their sacrifice and heroism with speeches, memorials, and spiritual healing walk. We also honor the victims each day with our hard work, our resilience, and our refusal to give in to despair. Through so much adversity, the Shiner Apo tribes have persevered. We have found success in the wake of sorrow. We have not given up, and we face each day with hope. And that lies our greatest tribute to the victims of Sand Creek Massacre. The Shiner Apo tribes celebrate our heritage and tradition while building a better life for our children and grandchildren. Today we can offer new generations the prosperity and the peace for which our ancestors gave so much. It is a moment in history that we can't forget, but we also want to come to some resolution and Forgive, but in the process, it's going to take a lot of understanding and, and commitment. They're gonna kill a rap a hole. They're gonna kill a rap a hole. A rap a hole. And Cheyenne, too. A rap a hole. And the Cheyenne, too.
Come on down. 